Forrester said, the term family altar simply means family Bible study. and family worship time. Every Christian family should have such a time daily. It is amazing how few families really take this seriously, he said, and practice this routinely. It is the best guarantee to have Christian children with good moral standards that do not drift through the teen years doing nothing and being bored. To have a family that has a witness for Christ in the community and to have a family that takes the church seriously and enjoys going to all the church services. Can somebody say man? That's real good. Holy Father God, we pray that you would bring about a revival of the family altar or what we call family devotions in every Christian family. For your glory, praise, and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Please join me in reciting or reading the Nicene Creed. It will mean something to you if you mean what you say and if you believe what you say. We believe in one God, the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of the same essence as the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. Glory be to God. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried, and may I add, shed his precious blood for our sins. The third day he rose again. Can somebody say amen? According to the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom, his kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son. And with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy, universal, apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. And everybody said, Amen. Our Bible reading for this morning uh, our devotional Bible reading is Psalm 51, verses 1 through 3, 54, pardon me, Psalm 54, verses 1 through 3. Save me, O God, by thy name, and judge me by thy strength. 
Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them, Selah. Brother Matthew Henry wrote in his commentary, God is faithful, though men are not to be trusted. Amen, somebody. And it is well for us, it is so. David has no... This would be the effectual answer to his prayers. Let us set God before us at all times. For if we do not, we are in danger. We are in danger of despair, hopelessness, a lack of joy, a lack of happiness of purpose, a lack of aim, uh, a lack of tranquility of mind. Hear, hear the psalmist well. Hear Brother Matthew Henry well here, folks. You will go right into despair every time and worry and fear and anxiety if you put your human invention and not God. Can somebody shout amen right there? Please join us in praying for the estates. We pray for governmental leaders based upon what the Bible says. If God did not command us to do it, we probably would not do it in our prayers. God does not want us to be partisan in our prayers. First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 says, I exhort therefore that first of all supplication and for all that are in authority, that includes police officers, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. The past presidents, we pray for this. Donald Trump, we pray for salvation, spiritual, family, life, and uh, protection blessings upon him. Understanding and insight, and we pray this for everybody. Vice President Mike Pence, first Aaron Pence, their children, presidential aides, chief of staff for operations, Joe, federal agency, services secretary, Tom Price, state governors, Washington Governor Jay Inslee, city mayor, St. Peters Petersburg, Florida, U.S. Warner, U.S. Representatives, California, and Gomez, Police Chiefs, Shula Vista, California Police Chief, Roxana Kennedy, Sheriffs, Palm Beach County, Florida Sheriff Rick Bradshaw, Military Leaders, General Darren W. McDo. Command of U.S. Transportation Command and Mad Dog Mattis. All law enforcement officials. We pray for the leaders of nations around the world as well, uh, including Venezuela in their situation. Uh, we 
pray for Hungary's President Janos Adair and Prime Minister Viktor Orban. We pray uh, that you would give them the same wisdom, knowledge, understanding, insight, and leadership. We pray for the church of state, uh, church leadership. Save those who are religious but law. Every denomination. Leaders of the Free Methodist Church, Super Whitfield and Brent and that's Whit Whithead or Whitehead. And Alma Thompson. We pray for all current events, understanding that you know all about the. We still, uh, we. Uh, other than ourselves. We pray for the fact that people killed in Barcelona and for the recovery. People in pray that you'll comfort these families as only you can. We pray for the families of the over 400 people killed in uh, comfort those families as only a mass burial. Pray for the families of the six dead and 12 people wounded. In, a, in Guatemala. We pray for the families of the 27 people killed and the 83 people wounded in a suicide bombing in northeast Nigeria. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem based upon your holy word. Psalm 122.6 Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. We pray for the persecuted Christians around the world, particularly today in the Philippines. Uh, give them grace in their trying hours and in their dying hours. We pray for another. Pray for salvation, spiritual families, and decay, and John King and guide and direct them to report the news and we also pray for the prayer requests that have come in to us uh, to our ministry here at Gospel Light Society and Gospel Light House of Prayer we pray for Bill bless him with a pastoral opportunity according to your will we pray for Patrick save him and his family deliver them from violence and confusion heal them from psychological psychological sickness help him to get married be with his mother and father and Lord we pray for Muhammad that you save his soul grant him health and happiness uh, to him and his family provide her and her family with a new house that uh, meets them to find favor with the people we pray for Esther, bless all of the lives of herself, her son, her husband, and her mother. Bless them with the funds they need to live on. We pray for Mary, help her and her sister to pass. Esther, who is un and save her, save her soul. We pray for Marilyn, give her a godly husband, help her to be a godly wife. We pray for Ekimuno, help her to come to know you as Savior. We pray for Aja, please uh, take them out of the homeless shelter they are in and give them a good house they can afford and enough money to live on. Please give her a job so she can take care of her children. Help her to receive her income tax refund as well. And Holy Father God, we pray for the people who have trusted you as Savior. We pray that you would help them to grow in the faith and help us to be the disciples that you want us to be. We pray for Saul. 
We pray for Zachary. We pray for Tom. We pray for Robert. We pray for Mobisa. We pray for Junior. We pray for people who have recommitted their lives to you. And we pray uh, that you would help these to stand strong in the faith and not to go back into the world. We pray for Celestino, Atito, Brenda, Ezekiel, Atenio, Julie, and Don. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We commit these souls into your hands as well as ours. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Beloved, our devotional reading for today is titled, Have You Ever Been Speechless with Sorrow? by Oswald Chambers. Luke 18.23 says, When he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. The rich young ruler went away from Jesus speechless with sorrow (laughs) having nothing to say in response to Jesus' words he had no doubt about what Jesus had said or what it meant and it produced in him a sorrow with no words with which to respond Have you ever been there? Has God's word ever come to you, pointing out an area of your life requiring you to yield it to him? Maybe he has pointed out certain personal qualities, desires, and interests, or possibly relationships of your heart and mind if so then you have often been speechless with sorrow the Lord will not go after you and he will not plead with you but every time he meets you at the place where he has pointed he will simply repeat his words saying If you really mean what you say, these are the conditions. Sell all that you have. In other words, rid yourself before God of everything that might be considered a possession until you are a mere conscious human being. My God, my God. Standing before him. And I know of two young people in my family who are doing that as I speak. And I have complimented them on and encouraged them on the faith that they're showing in God right now. And it's a beautiful thing. They can't see it, but I can see it. I can see what's going to happen in the future. God knows what's going to happen for them in the future. But if a young Christians to do what they're doing, as this writer is talking about, stripping themselves of what they already have and stepping out by faith, literally. And then give God all of that. That is where the battle is truly fought. In the realm of your will, my God, my God, in the realm of your will, Are you to your idea of what Jesus wants than to Jesus himself? God will test you. The Lord will test you. If so, you are likely to hear one of his harsh and unyielding statements in you. What Jesus says is be easy when it is hard, uh, when it is heard. It is only easy who have 
beware of allowing anything to soften the hard words of Jesus Christ. I can be so rich in my own poverty or in the awareness of the fact that I am nobody, that I will never be a disciple of Jesus. Or I can be so rich in the awareness that I am somebody that I will never be a disciple of Jesus. Am I willing to be destitute? Am I willing to be poor? Even in my sense of awareness of my destitution and poverty? If not, that is why I become discouraged and full of despair. Self-love. My God, my God, may he help you today. Discouragement is disillusioned self-love. And self-love may be love for my devotion to Jesus. Not love for Jesus himself. Now, now, now that's deep, folks. But I'm going to have to cut it off there, and I hope you get it by freight at least. May God help you. Holy Father God, we pray heard. And we thank you for the deep teachers of your word. Insight that can dig down deep into our And so Lord, help us to leave here today with our heart and our mind stayed on Jesus Christ's name we pray beloved before I depart you to, uh, from you today if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior Jesus Christ says to you in John 3:16, for God so loved the world that includes you, that he gave his only begotten son, that's Jesus, that whosoever, that's anybody, believeth in him should not perish, that is hell, but have everlasting life, that is heaven. The Bible also says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shall be saved, saved from sin and hell. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, if you would simply believe in Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried and rose again, that he shall because he is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. His name is Jesus. You need to get to know him. You need to trust in him today. You need to be saved by him today. So believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I will help you with the prayer called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner and that I have done evil in my life and I know that I cannot pay for my sins for Jesus Christ's sake please forgive me of my sins as I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ that he died for my sins was buried and rose again Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins past. And to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved, if you just trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, 
and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your you that based upon the word of God you are now saved from sin and hell and you're on your way to heaven welcome to the family of God dear friend I want to congratulate you on doing the most important thing in life and that is simply believing on what Christ has done for you for more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my pamphlet what to do after you enter through the door Jesus Christ said in John 10 9 I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer.